In this video, we are going to talk about the efficacy model. First of all, we have to know why we need an efficacy model. We have learned so many models, but why do we need an extra one? So let's recall what we have learned so far. For the Clark's model, which is the simplest one, you have R plus D equals DR, and the EC50 of their model is KD. For the partial agonist model, we have EC50 equals KD1, KD2 over KD2 plus 1. In the constitutive activity model, we have EC50 equals alpha KD1 plus KR over 1 plus alpha times KR. In any of these three models, EC50 is independent on the concentration of R. So the total number of receptor has nothing to do with the EC50. But in the real world, in some experiments, when you change the total number of the receptors, EC50 will change as well. And none of the models we have learned so far can explain why the EC50 will change with the total number of the receptors. So that is why we need a new model to explain the observation in experiment. Therefore, some guy who got nothing to do developed the efficacy model, which is written as D plus R equals DR, and DR will lead to a stimulus, which is written as S, and that stimulus leads to the response. Does this model look familiar to you? It looks like the partial agonist model, right? In the partial agonist model, you have dr star here, and there is a kd2. So, in this model, the dr star is replaced by s, which is the stimulus. In this model, does EC50 change with the total number of receptor? So far, we don't know yet. We have to derive the equation form of Q to see whether that is true. The first thing we have to know about this model is that Q is written as QM S1 plus S. So why is this so weird? What is QM? QM is the maximal response which the system is capable of. So what about this term? What is S? S is the stimulus, which cannot even be measured. And it is not even identified. It is just a term. The purpose of this term is to build a saturable equation, which is S over 1 plus S. This is the easiest form of a saturable equation you can think of. If it works, and it is simple, don't make it more complicated. So you can see here, Q should be always bigger than 0 and smaller than QM, because S1 over 1 plus S is between 0 and 1. Again, QM is the maximal response of which the system is capable. No matter how many agonists you add in the system, this Q may not even reach QM because of this fraction. And how close is Q to QM depends on the value of this fraction. All right. So what about this epsilon? Epsilon is an analogy of intrinsic activity. So S is proportional to the concentration of dr, and the constant is epsilon. From the Clark's model, we know that dr is rt times d over kd plus d. 
So S equals epsilon times dr, epsilon times rt. The name of the epsilon is the intrinsic efficacy. And we define another term, it's called efficacy. There is no intrinsic in the name of the new term. And E is defined as the intrinsic efficacy times RT. So what does this look like? This looks like the Q max term in the Clark's model. Remember Q max equals A times RT. And A is the intrinsic activity. So S can be written as E times D over KD plus D. So we substitute S into Q, this term. We have Q equals QM E times D over KD plus D over 1 plus E times D over KD plus D. So by rearranging it, you will have Q max over E over 1 plus E times D, D plus KD 1 plus E. So now you can see the Q max and the EC50 of the system. As we mentioned, Q is a fraction of QM. The fraction is E over 1 plus E, as stated here. So this is the Q max. It's a fraction of QM. What about EC50? EC50 is KD plus 1 plus E. So now you can see the EC50 depends on KD and E. E is epsilon times RT. Therefore, EC50 depends on the total number of the receptors. Now we have to do the routine analysis. When E increases, Q increases. When E goes into positive infinity, E over 1 plus E approaches 1 and the Q approaches QM. When E decreases, Q decreases. When E approaches zero, E over one plus E approaches zero, and Q approaches zero, and this is an antagonist. When E increases, EC50 decreases. That makes sense because a higher efficacy leads to a lower EC50. Vice versa, when E decreases, EC50 decreases. When E approaches zero, EC50 approaches KD. So what we just said can be observed in this plot. From curve A to curve M, the efficacy decreases, and that's why the Q max decreases. The EC50 increases and you can see the EC50 approaches negative 4. Negative 4 is log KD. I hope the interpretation of this graph is clear. So let's rewrite this model again. Q equals QM E over 1 plus E times D KD 1 plus E plus D. And the QM times E over 1 plus E is Q max times D over EC50 plus D. So if we move Q max to the left, we have Q over Q max, which is the fractional response, equals D, plus D over EC50 plus D. And this is between 0 and 1. We can also calculate the fractional occupancy of the receptors. As we know, dr equals rt times d over 
KD plus D. If we move the total receptor to the left, we have DR, which is the binding form over the total number of receptors equals D over KD plus D. So let's look at this picture. This is what we just derived. We only look at ligand A and ligand B. Let's compare these two. First of all, we look at the binding. The fractional binding is calculated as this. It is independent of the efficacy. Therefore, the dashed line, which represents binding, is the same for ligand A and B. However, the solid lines are different in two graphs. The solid line stands for the fractional response. And why is it different? Because EC50 is different. And why is EC50 different? Because efficacy is different. And that leads to a different EC50, which is KD over 1 plus E. When efficacy is large, EC50 will be smaller. When EC50 is smaller, Q over Q max is bigger because EC50 is in the denominator. As you can see here, for ligand A, the efficacy is 100. For ligand B, the efficacy is 1. Ligand A has a higher efficacy so the fractional response is bigger for ligand A, even at the same level of fractional occupancy of the receptors. As you can see here, the fractional occupancy is, is 9.1%, but the response for ligand A is at uh, 91%. For ligand B, it is at 